Hello, James here, and today we're heading from Edinburgh to Newcastle, which is my usual trip in the Nissan Leaf last year when I got the car. And this time around, we are in the Hyundai Kona, and currently we've clocked 27.8 miles. The reason for that was I came from Livingston into work, and I was going to set off from there, but I actually had to double back slightly to meet my wife because I forgot the camera, and there wouldn't be much of a video without the camera. And the reason for this video is I want to compare and see if this car was out last year and I bought this over the Nissan Leaf, what sort of difference would it have made to my journey? And it's about a 125 mile trip. We're gonna head down to Newcastle and I'm gonna go 60 miles an hour and I just wanna see what sort of efficiency that we get because last summer I managed to get 150 miles in the Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour and I did 150 miles and there was about 8% left in the state of charge and I probably could have went that little bit further but I, that means I could actually get to Newcastle in one charge but I was just wondering if I could actually do a return trip in the corner without charging up. Highly unlikely now since I've clocked up about 30 miles of extra um, distance. The overall distance return to Livingston is 270 miles. And the Gessel meter here says we have 270 in the tank. So you might be able to make it. But I think overall what I want to see is if I can get 250 miles out of this car doing 60 miles an hour. And judging from what I've seen on the internet, that is a possibility. So I'm just going to step it up now that the traffic has thinned out a little around the ring road. We decided to order the corner because it ticked all the boxes Jen wanted in our next EV. One, the longer range, and two, she didn't want anything too big. So this kind of fit the bill, and she really enjoyed the test drive that we did last time. So we put the order down, and it was 10 months waitlist. So we were in October at that point, which meant it was a late August delivery. I think it was 28th of August that the car was supposed to arrive but uh, we managed to get the car a little bit earlier. We got a call from Will around May, and he said that the car was already getting shipped over and it'll be here in the uh, middle of June, which meant we had one week, I'm uh, sorry, we had one month to sort out the loan for the car. We decided to go for the EST loan, uh, the Energy Saving Trust Scotland loan, um, and that is 0% interest for six years on any sort of EV car up to £35,000. So we applied for that, and there was a bit of a backstory with this, just in case anyone is interested in getting this loan for themselves. And the story behind it is that we applied in May, it was probably middle of May, and put the application through and it was like 15 working days for them to process it, which meant they sat on it for 15 days. So it's now four weeks into the process and on the Friday we get an email saying that our application has been denied because our credit wasn't good enough, uh, we failed a credit check. So I was a little bit miffed at this point because I've never had credit denied to us in the past. So we're going to query this on the Monday and then we get an email on them before I could actually call them first thing on the Monday saying, oh, uh, this the last email that we sent you isn't the final um, decision. So if you use this website, I think it was called Noodles, and they were like a credit check company that the EST Scotland loan uses to do a credit check on people. And we basically had to go through that. So we thought, mm, give it a go. And 
first thing we noticed was the questions that were asked by the uh, loans company and there was a lot of stuff with it including like mortgage and wages and outgoings and loans and they knew a lot of things about us and this is this sort of information EST Scotland wouldn't have had because of sort of like laws for protection, data protection and things like that. So for them to process our loan in the first place through Noodles was bound to fail anyway. So we put that through and the credit came back with a really high score. So we basically put that back to EST Scotland and they said, oh yeah, yeah, that's fine now. And they processed that and that took another, oh, how long was that? Yeah, it took another two weeks. So this was the end of July now. And on that, on the end of July, they sent out another email goes, yep, we agreed to give you the loan in principle so you can go ahead with it all. And everything was hunky-dory. We were expecting the money to come in on the, the week after on the next pay run. And we called them up saying, you know, just to check to see when the pay run was. The response was, oh, it's a uh, month end and uh, we're actually closed for the week, the payroll department, for whatever reason. And that meant that we had to actually wait an extra week. So all in all, I think from start to finish, it was roughly about two months to get the, the full EST Scotland loan. And I don't think that's really that bad. I think that's actually quite good for a government body to hand you over money like that. It's not, they're not really a bank and they're, they're, I think they've only got like a handful of people working in the department so for them to turn it around like that is great. But what I wish they did was saying that they won't be able to put the credit check through because a lot of people going through this have had the credit checks denied and I think that was the reason because they just don't have all the information. So if you are to go for this loan, just bear in mind that it's roughly about two months before you'd be able to go through the whole process. So use that, make sure that you make delay that and well, make sure you have plenty of time to put it through. And we probably should have done it a bit earlier and just had the money in place. But that is how we got the car. We're not getting it on HP, we're not getting it on PCP. It is an outright buyout loan that we got from the Scottish government. So if you're in Scotland and you're after this loan, there's two things that you got to keep in mind. One, you can own an EV at the time of applying. And two, you can only apply for it once. Well, actually, you can apply for it multiple times if it fails. but you can only have one loan, you can only have the loan once. So if you apply for it once and you're successful and you got a car, and then the next time around you want another EV, uh, you can't take out a second loan. So keep that in mind. Now that we secured the funds, we had to transfer that to Will at DSG. So we got a couple of suitcases and <laughs> a couple of bodyguards to head down there. No, actually we didn't. <laughs> we actually did the bank transfer like uh, any normal sane person would do. So the first major test for the car was to travel from Morecambe to Glasgow and then over to Livingston, which is a 210 mile trip and we were going at 72 miles per hour indicated on the speedometer and that's what the cruise control was set at and once we got back home there was still about 25 miles or so left on the gasometer so that's like a good 230 miles on that trip and there's a lot of uphill actually going through Kalil. That first test was great because it was exactly what Jen wanted. She wanted to be able to get to um, Livingston to Manchester which is roughly about 215 miles without stopping to charge and we don't actually need to blast it all the way down at that sort of speed all the time. So that will give her the confidence of using this car to get to Manchester from Scotland. So that leads us on to why I am doing this trip and there is a reason for it. We've sold the house in Newcastle so I need to go down there and sort out a few things and 
uh, make sure that all the bulky items aren't in the house. So this gave me a good opportunity to see what it would have been like. This is, <laughs> this is uh, one of those game shows, it's like, this is what you could have won. So <laughs> if this car was out last year and I had uh, the range that of, you know, of a larger battery compared to what the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf was. I mean, that thing was great. It got me up to Edinburgh and I could charge and come back down. But I think with this car doing the, the, these sort of speeds at 60 miles an hour, I reckon I could have got there and back in one charge, no problem. And that would have been just a 250 mile trip. 250 mile round trip because I used to do the 200 well I used to do the 125 mile one way trip videos down there I think now the big question is on everyone's mind is are we keeping all three EVs or did we get rid of one of them well we got rid of one and the choice was between obviously the Leaf or the Zoe and we got the Zoe as a temporary vehicle and we were going to trade it back in for this and at the time when we got it it was £6,000 and to trade it in Will was well he said it was worth 6500 so I don't know if that's what it's worth for him to sell on or if that was what he was going to offer me but that gives you an idea of how much the depreciation or lack of depreciation depreciation of the Zoe is after uh, seven months yeah because we had it for about seven months now and you know if we were to get any other car and hand it back to a dealer they would nowhere near give us anywhere near the same price that we bought the car for so it's kind of shows or gives a perspective of how much in demand EVs are currently. So the short answer is we're keeping the Zoe and we're getting rid of the Leaf or we got rid of the Leaf and when I say we got rid of the Leaf I we actually passed it on to my parents because they wanted an EV. I don't know why, I don't know where they got all this information from about EVs and how great they are and how much you can save but they decided that they would like to take on the Nissan Leaf. So the fact that my parents has got the Leaf isn't a bad thing because I can still check up on the state of health of the battery every now and then. Uh, I was really, I really missed it actually on the first week of it going because we actually gave it to my parents a week before we picked this up just because I thought we got the loan from the EST Scotland before we found out that we were closed for the month end <laughs> and um, yeah I, I, I really miss that car I still miss it now it's, it's a great car it's still got a lot of things that are I think better than the Hyundai Kona and obviously the Kona has its um, merits as well for different things or for different reasons so, I mean I'll probably go into that at some point but for now we're going to have a little bit more videos of the Kona and maybe a little bit of video about the Zoe if people are interested in that. Leave a comment below if you think you would like to know a bit more about uh, getting a cheap Zoe or a cheap second hand Zoe. So I'm back in Newcastle now in the old house and we have clocked 157.6 miles and we have 
4.9 miles per kilowatt hour, really close to 5. Uh, we didn't take the detour back up to Hemiston Gate from uh, Edinburgh just to get, grab the camera, which I forgot. I think we would uh, got a better result. The guesso meter up the top there says we can do 146 miles left. Let's have a look at the battery. We are at 52% and we'll check on the usage. It says we can, with climate off, which I have been doing, we can do 146 miles. So we click on the battery again. If we look here, 97% of the battery was used to propel the motor and electronics 3%. Climate control zero because I haven't had it on and the battery management system didn't need to switch on the cooling system because I haven't actually charged a car or anything so it doesn't need to cool the battery down and today's been a pretty mild sort of day at 18 degrees centigrade. So overall I'm really impressed with the economy of this car going at 60 miles an hour because most of the roads in Scotland are 60 and uh, are quite hilly so this kind of gives you an idea of what this car can do in the rurals of Scotland and the, the type of terrain that we have there. We'll see you tomorrow when we head back and see if we can make it back without charging up, possibly. Uh, I don't really want to go below 10%, um, so let's try and not get down to turtle mode because I don't really want to go that low. And also, it's not my car, is it? I'm sure Jen would be happy watching me crawl along trying to get to a charge point with her brand new car. <laughs> so until then, we're going to find out what the car's going to be like on the return trip. I'm just going to say goodbye to the Rolex charger, which we've had for years. Two. So this is on, this is actually mounted on the outside wall and it basically goes from the front of the house where the fuse box is all the way around the garden uh, drove the home straight through so there's no cable going up so it's actually hidden behind there it's quite we're quite lucky that this part isn't a private path so we can actually park here and have the car charging which is quite nice this is a car, two-tone ceramic blue with a white roof. Quite like it actually. It's, it's quite, quite modern. And then obviously the front here. Right, it's uh, time to hit the road I think. Heading back up to Scotland. Goodbye Newcastle. We're currently heading back up north and it says on the guessometer 136 miles and the distance left is 122 so it's cutting a little bit fine with what we have to have 10% left in the battery which I very much doubt we'll be able to do so we'd have to run the car a little bit dry but I don't think I'll do that like I said before it's not really my car and like I said, I don't think Jen will be too happy seeing her car limping to the charge point. So once we get to about 10%, I'll find the charger and charge up. And that's probably closer towards Edinburgh. So at least we'll make it to Edinburgh. So why is the Hyundai Kona so efficient? And the reason for that, I think, well, one of the reasons is the regen. The regen is actually really powerful on this. On the this and Leaf, you've got the 50 kilowatt hour charger, and when you actually hit the regen or the uh, e-pedal on the Nissan Leaf 40, it actually regens at up to 53 kilowatts. That's the highest I've seen. So doing 70 miles an hour and you hit the e-pedal, it actually regens at the charge rate that you would at a rapid charger. Well, a little bit more than that. So it can go up to 53 kilowatts. But what I found on the corner is if you go into the EV mode, you'd see like the battery percentage. It's uh, at 48%. So we click on that 
and it shows you the range that we got left and how long it charges but if you click on this again it comes up with this energy consumption chart here and currently we're chewing 16 kilowatts of energy on the drive we're coming up to a roundabout now so i'm gonna at 60 miles an hour i'm gonna hit onto the regenerative braking now so i'm holding the regen now and you see that charging all the way up to 74, 74 kilowatts. And that is how much it's generating back into the car. The car can charge at 77 kilowatts. So I'm expecting it to be able to charge or regen a little bit more than that. I kind of failed there because I was, <laughs> the, the, the cruise control was still on. So I'm going to, go on to normal drive mode so the next roundabout that we come to i'll do the same thing i'll probably try and get up to 70 miles an hour and then hit the regenerative braking which is the left paddle right we are almost at 70 i'm gonna hit the regen brake now whoa 98 <laughs> 98 kilowatts that's how much we pump back into the car that's crazy and then the miles per kilowatt just jumped up another 0 0.1 on the miles per kilowatt hour that is crazy so when they say that this car is 100 kilowatt on charge speed they're, they're, they're not kidding about that they're talking about the regenerative braking charging speed not the charging speed that you get at a actual rapid charge point so that that is that kind of shows why this car is so efficient i'm really surprised at that number there of i'm actually a bit, a bit lost for words but you can tell why this car is so efficient like when i was driving yesterday the miles per kilowatt was 4.7 because I was doing a constant speed but the minute I hit into Newcastle and I had to start slowing down a lot of that energy actually transferred back into the car and that this is one of the reasons why people can actually eke out 350 odd miles in the Hyundai Kona when they're doing city driving because the regen is just crazy it's just nuts I'm uh, I'm, it just makes me wonder if Teslas have this sort of regen. I mean, do they do they do the same sort of thing? I don't know. It's, uh, I'll just have to buy myself a Tesla to find out. <laughs> we are coming off the A1 um, the sat nav is saying I should go up the A697 up towards Cold Stream and I think I'm going to agree with it this time so I missed the first turning for it so I'm going off the beaten track here and the reason for that is this, is, this route is about 20 miles shorter so maybe I don't really need a charge maybe I can go this way and cut the actual distance because going the other direction I mean going this way it's 105 miles and it's saying it's 105 and then the guess will meet us saying that we've got 121 miles left to go so going this way might be a better idea and also the other thing I want to test out is if I'm going this way we should actually get better efficiency for the fact that we need to slow down for the 30 zones and there's a lot of twists and turns that I'll need to slow down for so that will give the car some chance to regen the battery on its own so we're just gonna take the country scenic route back there's no real reason to go up the A1 apart from it is the usual sort of route that I would take but we might as well go this way and the thing is what I really want to find out is how I can get 180 miles out of this if the actual gesso meter is more accurate than the leaf because on the Nissan Leaf once you run the battery down 
it tends to reduce the gum a little bit so there's always 10% in reserve so it kind of lies to you to make you fill up a little bit earlier than you need to but I got a funny feeling the Kona doesn't do that it doesn't really need to with the size of the battery so let's head up a 679 have a leisurely drive have a nice scenic route all the way up and hopefully we won't actually need to go and charge the car So we rolled all the way down, uh, down to Dalkeith from the top of that mountain and uh, this car is so efficient. We're, before we had the, the difference between how many miles left and the gas meter was um, 20 miles at the bottom of the uh, mountain and then when we're coming back down we're looking at the difference now, we're looking at you know, we've got 48 on the gas meter and we've got 21 mile left to go. That's 26 miles. So we gained 6 miles just rolling down the hill. When people say that the Hyundai Kona is the king of efficiency, they're not exaggerating at all. So that goes for the Kia e Niro and the Kia Soul when that comes to market. So this drivetrain is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we've clocked 268 miles and it's still going. I mean, we've only got 21 miles left to go and traveling around 60 miles an hour or a little bit slower due to lorries and caravans isn't really going to, uh, it's actually more than likely going to help the efficiency and the fact that we can actually get this car to do 300 miles, granted that I actually didn't have the climate control on and the way I got around that, even though it was a little bit warm in here, I actually had the uh, cooling seat on and I just had that switched on onto the three bars, three blue bars to cool my backside. And now we are stuck in traffic. <laughs> Lovely. So I've finally made it back to Livingston on one charge. And if you look here, we've done 289.6 miles and it's five miles per kilowatt hour for the whole trip and we have 30 miles left on the gas meter so earlier on i was saying that i was going to charge a car once it hits 10 percent and sort of like start char finding a charge point but there was no need to do that because i'm actually home now and if you look at the range there it says it can still get to the edge of glasgow and that's about 30 miles away from here in Livingston. So we click on this page, <clears throat> saying we've got 30 miles, and if we charge to full, if we drive the way we have been, it thinks or it thinks we can do 296 miles. And I don't see why we couldn't. I mean, we could still probably keep on driving. And if you look at the battery bar, we're still. We still got like one white bar, so it doesn't really it doesn't really give you that much of a concern when you see that. So I'm really impressed with the efficiency of the Hyundai Kona if you're taking it easy, driving it like I would normally with my Nissan Leaf. And I shouldn't say my Nissan Leaf; it's not mine anymore, is it? 
So I think I found Hyundai's secret sauce for the Kona efficiency and that's all to do with the regenerative braking. At one point I was pulling 100 kilowatts back into the battery and that is faster than most of the rapid chargers that are currently available at the moment and with that squirt of extra juice back into the car it's no wonder the efficiency of this car is above and beyond what I was I thought it was capable of. And the fact that it shows you on the screen is great without using things like Leaf Spy. I'd like to say thank you for watching and if you like this video please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.